as the Cold War was ending, at some point the laboratory lost interest in the classified report library and it fell into sort of a state of non-use. Uh, and it turned in when it moved into this building into a, an information preservation center as opposed to a vibrant classified library with new material coming in and researchers actively exploring it like a library. And so we decided this was the right time to bring that back to life, an exciting, vibrant place where people can learn 75 years of nuclear enterprise history here at the laboratory. It, it's an incredible asset to us, and my experience with the center is the vast array of documentation that we have access to, that, that uh, the technical reports, the data sources that we have here to help us underpin what we're trying to, to do in weapons production today. And so it's an extremely valuable place to come. And, and uh, as we bring on new engineers and scientists into our organization, that's the first stop to, to find out you know, what's been done. The material that's contained over here is used on a daily basis by our physicists, scientists, uh, engineers, and production specialists. It's interesting, when you think back over the years of the entire nuclear security enterprise, starting from the Manhattan Project to the present, the only organization that has been one continuous part of that enterprise is Los Alamos. It started at Los Alamos, it's the Los Alamos Project. That evolved into the Los Alamos National Laboratory that we have today. And so that's what makes it special, is kind of the comprehensive nature of the collection, the fact that it spans the entire history of the nuclear security enterprise up to the present day, and the fact that it's now accessible to researchers. Today, we have tens of thousands of cubic feet of records pertaining to weapons design, engineering, to the development of nuclear weapons, global security, etc. I believe that we have the largest single collection of information of that type in the world. At the core of our mission is preserving nuclear weapons and national security information. It was our job to weaponize the designs, for starters, from from the physics designers, and it was our job to turn in hardware Five, for four, the stockpile, three, and at the same time, two, test them. One. All the records are there, Is and, and they're pretty records. complete. It's extremely important. This whole database is searchable. So I can search on a shot, I can search on an author, I can search on a diagnostic, and I very quickly find out what has been done in the past and what ought to be analyzed in the future, how to improve on the, on the previous results. So the science that was done in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, 80s, and so on, um, is still valid. It's as valid today as it was then. When you go to the results of the science that they have there, locked up in, oftentimes in their notebooks or, uh, you know, in their memos to each other, you get that same sense of great minds tackling with national security problems that still confront us today. The National Security Research Center maintains all of the actual data from the days of atmospheric nuclear testing. We have thousands and thousands of cubic feet of original materials in just about every format that you can imagine. Our team of professionals physically preserves them, makes them accessible to our scientists today, and gives them a window into a past. And that past includes an era of testing and doing things that we can no longer do. The records of the theoretical division, which did the design and analysis of weapons. Uh, there was the weapons physics divisions, which actually built the devices. Uh, the field test division, which did the actual tests and it aided in data collection. And then of course the chemistry, radiochemist divisions uh, that analyzed the data collected. So when you take all those records, which are available in the NSRC and put them together, you have a very complete picture of not only what nuclear weapons were, but their evolution over time and what the enduring stockpile is capable of doing. The global state of affairs is changing, and changing fairly rapidly. So when we look at this construct of a changing geopolitical environment, and you overlay that with rapidly evolving rate of change with regard to technical development, 
I believe Lanel today is even more relevant than it was in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. I think the combination of a weapon design, global security, uh, built upon your know, fundamental foundation of science and engineering is what we have in store for us in our future. Production people, like myself, will always look at ways to do it better, faster, cheaper, new equipment and those things. But in order to do that, I need an under, a technical underpinning. So I go back to the center and say, what's been done? And then from a programmatic perspective, it shortens the duration of getting work done in a nuclear facility. That's infinite, so much uh, more cost effective to not repeat what's been done. It's a new time at Lanel, so it's, it's, it's really exciting. And you can see it, you can hear it in, in the folks in PF4 and around the laboratory. It's, we got a mission. All of this is centered around the unique global security mission that's the core of the Los Alamos Laboratory. Um, and for every one of those missions, there are documents in this collection that are key to supporting the technical, scientific, and engineering research that we have to undertake in order to accomplish those missions. They are the cornerstone, the foundation, the basis of our science, our engineering, and our work. I think there's often a mistake of thinking, well, this was done in the 60s or 70s, so it's historical or it's legacy material or something. That's just not true. For many of these fields, there exists no comparable modern treatment of the subject. The research center contains this amazing record of what those guys thought about that doesn't exist anywhere else. The research center is critically important from a few perspectives. When we assess the, uh, the archival information that we've collected at Los Alamos, that information is incredibly useful in designing our future. Understanding our past, understanding what worked, what did not work, will help us um, engage in innovation well into the future. The preservation, curation, maintenance, and transmission of knowledge, right? That is, that is an essential piece of the scientific enterprise anywhere in the world. And that's what this collection helps to support. The material that we have is, uh, is physical hard copies and less than 10% of the material has been digitized. And we have a very robust program to digitize the material. We're leveraging uh, cutting edge technology in industry. We're also uh, bringing in uh, partner companies that, that can actually uh, implement machine learning and artificial intelligence in order to pull the information for the researchers. So the goal at, uh, in a very short period of time is to be able to give our researchers a Google-like search interface that can search our entire collection. The material will be available not just for uh, Los Alamos National Laboratory, but it will be available for the entire nuclear security enterprise uh, managed by the NSA. A center, like many things, will only be as effective as the value that is brought to bear from that center. Uh, and having top-notch people working there that have a certain passion and knowledge of what is the content, a willingness to help other people is a, is a very important element. And so I am really encouraged with the enthusiasm, the knowledge, and uh, the excitement that exists around this center.